While watching TV one day, Chibiko suddenly noticed that his head felt just a little bit heavier than normal. He was worried for a moment, but then he looked up. He was wearing a tall, pointy hat. Wait, was he at a birthday party? Whose birthday was it? And why was it in his own house? Happy birthday! A voice said, and Danny came into the room holding a wrapped box over his head. I've gotten you a present! Chibiko looked around. There was nobody else in his living room. Was it his birthday? Had he somehow forgotten? Thank you, he said as Danny gave him the present. Go on, open it, Danny said. Chibiko did as he was told. Inside was a hamster. It was very cute. Chibiko patted it, put it down, and turned to thank his friend again. Happy birthday, Danny said. He was holding another present. Another present? Chibiko asked. That's a lot. Thank you very much. Of course, Danny said, and then passed the box to Chibiko. Chibiko opened his second present. It was... a cat. Wow, two pets, Chibiko thought to himself. Happy birthday! Danny was holding another box. Are you sure this is okay? Chibiko asked. Open it! Danny said excitedly. Chibiko opened his third present. It was... a monkey. Um... Chibiko started to speak. Happy birthday! Danny was holding yet another box. Chibiko held this new present nervously. Open it! Open it! Chibiko opened his fourth present. It was... a panda. Are you sure? Chibiko began to ask. Happy birthday! Danny was holding another present. Chibiko was starting to feel a bit confused. Maybe even dizzy. Open it! This one's really special! Chibiko opened his fifth present. It was... A giraffe! Where can I keep a giraffe? Chibiko began to wonder, while also worrying that it might eat all of the food in the fridge. He was pretty sure that giraffes mostly ate leaves, but if one was living in his house, would it also start eating things that he likes to eat himself? And then might it eat things like balls, or towels, or chairs, or tables? Or TVs? His house would be empty! What a nightmare! A nightmare. Chibiko opened his eyes. He had been dreaming and was safely in his bed. It wasn't his birthday, but for this time at least, he was quite happy that it wasn't. Chibiko came home with a large paper bag full of groceries. It was quite heavy, and he had had some trouble opening the front door. But he eventually got inside and went to the kitchen to unpack. This was the first time that he had been shopping in some time, and so he had bought a lot of food. He had milk and cheese, some bread, some pork and some chicken, a few snacks, and some vegetables. He packed everything away. That's pretty lucky, 
he thought to himself as he put the last bag of candy in a cabinet. The bag was starting to tear open. A few more minutes and I might have lost everything. He then made himself a grilled cheese sandwich for dinner, brushed his teeth, and went to bed. Chibiko! A voice said. Chibiko groaned and turned his face into his pillow. Chibiko! The voice said again. Chibiko sat up and rubbed his eyes. Danny was in his bedroom. Chibiko really needed to get better about locking his door when he was home. You won't believe it! Danny's voice was almost shouting. Chibiko couldn't tell if his friend was excited or afraid. Believe what? Chibiko asked. Follow me! Danny said and then rushed out of the bedroom. Chibiko got up and followed his friend through the living room and to his front door. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was an enormous pumpkin in his front yard. I could hear it growing when I was trying to sleep last night, Danny said. Isn't it incredible? I wonder how it got here. Chibiko stood in thought. Jelly beans quite often appeared in his front yard. But a pumpkin, that was something new entirely. Just how did it get there? Oh, Chibiko said as he suddenly realized something. There was a small hole in my shopping bag yesterday. Maybe a small pumpkin or something fell out before I got inside? That makes sense, Danny said. Pumpkins can be kind of weird and magical at this time of year. I wonder what we should do with this one. It looks delicious. Chibiko wasn't really sure if pumpkins were magic at any time of the year. But it was true that there was a very big one in his front yard right now. I think it's a bit too big for us to eat it all, Chibiko began. What if we turn it into a swimming pool? Danny suggested. I, um, don't think so? Chibiko replied. What about a hot tub? Danny said. Wouldn't that basically be like taking a bath in pumpkin soup? Chibiko said. I guess so, Danny said. His voice sounded a little disappointed. Why don't we just decorate it, Chibiko said. In fact, your body might be the perfect shape to measure the eyes with. Danny seemed to like this idea, and so they set about using him to measure and cut out some eyes on the giant pumpkin. It was a lot of fun, but all of the measuring and cutting was very hard work and it was already starting to get dark by the time they were done. I don't think we have time to cut out a proper mouth, Chibiko said. It's getting late. Don't worry, Daddy beamed and quickly ran off to his treehouse. Chibiko was curious about what Danny was doing, but he didn't have to wait long. Danny returned with a box of crayons. I find it scary if we cut out a normal mouth, he said as he offered Chibiko a choice of color. Let's just draw one in our own style. And so, Chibiko and Danny worked together to create a very large and very unique Jack O'Lantern. It wasn't scary, but it wouldn't have mattered. They were both exhausted and had fallen asleep before they could even eat dinner and get to their beds. One day, Chibiko woke up feeling a little bit cold. At first, he was worried that he might be sick. 
But when he got out of bed and looked out of the window, he noticed that there were white dots fluttering down outside his house. It was snowing. Feeling very excited, Chibiko took a nice hot shower, ate some breakfast, brushed his teeth, and then searched his closet for something warm to wear. Uh, no? Nope. Perhaps not. Something else, maybe? No, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, oh dear. Chibiko dug and dug and dug through his closet, making a terrible mess of his bedroom as he did so, until finally he found what he was looking for. Ah, that's better. Now that he was properly dressed, Chibiko could go outside and play in the snow. He opened his front door and walked out into the winter wonderland that had come to visit his home. Much to Chibiko's surprise, even though the ground was white and snow was falling from the sky, it was still quite sunny outside. What a nice day it was turning out to be. While he had seen snow in TV shows and movies before, this was the first time that it had ever snowed in Chibiko's town. He wondered if he should go to the park and see if people were having a snowball fight. But he was a bit scared to wander too far from his house when it was snowing so much. And so he instead decided to fall back into the snow and make an angel. Poof! Ouch! Chibiko had always imagined that snow was soft. Like white cotton candy from the sky, only less sticky. It turned out that it was a little bit harder and a bit more icy than he had been expecting. Still, it had cushioned his fall enough, and so he waved his arms up and down and created a beautiful snow angel. Nice angel, a voice said. Want to try making something else? Chibiko sat up and saw Danny standing beside what looked like the base of a snowman. Sure, Chibiko said. What do you want me to do? Can you roll a nice big snowball to use as a body? Danny asked. I'll make the head. Chibiko gave a salute like he had seen on a movie once. Can do, Captain, he said and then set about rolling a nice, big snowball to use as a snowman's body. As he rolled, he wondered what they might name their snowman. Tom? Brett? Angelus? Yuki? Oh, what if it was a snow woman? Jessica? Lara? Marlene? And what would they dress it in? Maybe he had a spare scarf? Did they have a top hat? Would a snow man or woman want to wear a jacket? Perhaps he shouldn't worry about what it would wear until after he had figured out what he and Danny would use for things like buttons, eyes, and a nose. Did he have any carrots in the house? Would celery make an okay nose, or would it just look strange? Maybe he could use pieces of chocolate for the buttons and the eyes. But he wondered if Danny would be tempted to eat those. He knew that he himself would be. Chibiko! Chibiko, where are you? Chibiko could hear Danny calling his name. I'm just here, Chibiko answered. Where? Danny asked. Here, Chibiko said again. Oh, Danny said. Chibiko had spent so much time thinking while he was rolling his snowball that instead of helping to make a snowman, he had turned himself into one.
it was very dark outside. But this was because it is dark all winter in the North Pole. It was actually still before dinner time, and Santa Danny was double checking that he had all of the presents that he would need for the night. It was a very big number, much higher than Chibiko could count to. Fortunately, although it was very cold, the sky was clear and many stars twinkled beautifully against it. Santa Danny finished counting and looked up at his sleigh. The elves had prepared a chicken for him to eat later, but he expected that he would fill up on milk and Christmas cake and cookies and whatever else might be left out for him while he worked. He put the chicken into a spare pink gift box and climbed aboard. It had been a tough year, so he had granted the reindeer a special holiday break on the moon. To help him out, they had left him some magic dust which should help the sleigh fly. One way to find out. Onward Dasher and Dancer, Prancer and... Wait, you're not here, Santa Danny said. I guess... Let's just go? The sleigh took off at great speed. It looked wonderful, flying against a backdrop of sparkling stars. But then, it became cloudy. Santa Danny was a bit sad that he couldn't see the sky, but at least it was still safe to fly. But then it started to become snowy. It was very cold, but Santa Danny kept flying. Then it became rainy. Santa Danny had to be very careful not to fall as he dug up a blanket to throw over the toy sack just to be extra sure that all of the presents wouldn't get too wet. But then, just as he was almost finished, it became very, very windy. The wind caught an untouched corner of the blanket and Santa Danny's sled started to spiral out of control. It spun towards the ground, just outside of the city. Crash. Santa Danny bounced across the ground. Everything was blurry and he felt quite dizzy. He stood up and tried to get his bearings. Where was his sleigh? Never mind that, there were presents scattered everywhere. He would have to pick them all up first. And he would have to hurry. He had many deliveries to make. He found a yellow present beside a giant candy cane. He was very hungry, so he ate the candy cane. Then he found an orange present next to an old stocking. He was still hungry, so he ate the stocking as well. After this, he found a blue present next to a tree. He still wasn't full, so he ate the tree. Finally, he could see the sleigh. There was a pink present just in front of it. He didn't want to eat his sleigh, so he ate the present. Ah, full at last. Chibiko woke up very suddenly. He was sweating. He looked at the time. <gasps> he had overslept. On Christmas Day! Danny was visiting for a big lunch! He had to hurry to get ready. Chibiko had only finished getting the plates out when his doorbell rang. Happy Holidays! Danny said. Merry Christmas! Chibiko replied and then paused. Is something wrong? Danny asked. I... I had a strange dream, Chibiko said. You were Santa, 
and you crashed and you lost some presents and you ate many strange things and I, I, I overslept, he admitted. Lunch isn't ready yet. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it, Danny said. It looks like the real Santa left you a present. Let's open that first. Chibiko went and picked up his gift. It was certainly nicely wrapped. I wonder what it is, Danny said. I got a basketball. Chibiko was silent. Well, Danny said, what is it? It's... It's... Chibiko said. His voice was full of disbelief. It's chicken! How lucky, Danny said. It smells good. We can have lunch after all. I guess we can, Chibiko said happily. The chicken was cooked perfectly, and so Chibiko and Danny enjoyed a delicious holiday lunch together. Although as they ate, Chibiko couldn't help but wonder if his friend had a very important, maybe even magical secret.